beetle. Light glinting off of its gossamer wings, the beetle had its silver shell open, soaking in the sun. It lay dormant, but aware. The sheen of its shell was often enough to deter predators, but it attracted others. A nearby magpie garbled inquisitively. Its nest was a treasure trove of items easily taken now that there were no humans to shoo it away. The beetle's eyes glowed faintly as it awoke. Its sunbathing would give it another day or two of use, depending on how far it traveled. The wings vibrated until they were a blur and the beetle was on its way. It was approaching what was once a small town, its population not having as far to fall when it happened. However, the beetle had had little success in the larger cities it had visited. Compiled in its memories were scenes of serene stillness. Cars sat silently, and if it was still, it could hear every branch bending, every rat chewing fervently, plants cracking asphalt to reclaim what was theirs. At first, it reasoned that cities with more people would be more likely to have remnants, strictly speaking in terms of odds, but it had found this hypothesis was incorrect. The clustered concrete structures proved too difficult to search. It could spend an eternity thoroughly searching each room of every building. It had the time. But the beetle knew that if there were any humans left, they did not have the same luxury. It passed through an orchard on the outskirts of the town. A scarecrow, crucified in a pumpkin patch, did not fool the beetle, but it landed on its hay-filled head. At first, these human images had confused it. Mannequins with their frozen limbs and blank faces, dolls with their limbs at impossible angles. It wondered why the humans made such things, but decided against spending the energy on it. The beetle investigated the nearby farmhouse. Its front door was left ajar. Inside were the signs of a hasty exit. Food was still on plates at the table, long since rotten and home to generations of flies. Hello? The beetle called out, just in case. A flurry of scratches filled the house as a dog scurried down the stairs and into the kitchen, its ears high, tail wagging. The dog had certainly seen better days, but it seemed to be making it without its family. It tilted its head at the beetle with its human voice. Sorry, the beetle said, and the dog tilted its head the other way. It spread its shell once more and flew out of the house, trailed by the dog. It did not see any harm in this, so it kept its pace slow so the dog could keep up. If anything, it thought, maybe the dog could help. The beetle could see and hear better than any human, but it could not smell. Within a few hours, they had reached the town. Its emptiness was to be expected, but the beetle knew that its chances of success were higher at night, especially with the cooler temperatures. Any humans would need to make fire for light and heat, and firelight could be seen from far away. They inspected the town square first, finding a diner devoid of patrons. The dog was excitedly sniffing about. It located some sealed packages of food, but seemed disinterested. The beetle left it to explore the kitchen. Food sat on the flat-top grill. Fries were submerged in the oil of the deep fryer. If the electricity had stayed on, perhaps the building would have burnt down. A lot of them would have, the beetle conjectured. A small room off the kitchen appeared to be an office. The beetle tiptoed its way over piles of paper. A photograph in a silver frame showed two women and two children, posing happily in the sunshine. The beetle recognized the orchard with its pumpkin patch in the background. The dog barked and the beetle immediately flew to it. Its tail was wagging furiously as it jumped in place. A woman stood in the doorway to the diner. The beetle landed on a nearby bar stool. Hey there, she said kindly to the dog and bent down to pet it. Her hands were bandaged. Hello, the beetle said, buzzing up into the air in front of her. The woman fell back and shouted. The dog barked in concern. What in the hell, she said and shielded her eyes as the beetle activated a small spotlight in its head. It saved images to its memory of her face as she squinted to see past the light. It confirmed she was one of the women from the photograph. Thinner and unkempt, but the same nonetheless. I am an autonomous drone that is seeking human life. The woman got to her feet, her voice choked by tears. Have you found anyone else? Do you know where my family is? You are my first confirmed discovery to date, it told her. It turned off the spotlight and landed on the back of one of her hands. She did not wince as she drew the insect close to her face. But it would serve my goal to find your family as well. And what are you supposed to do when you find us? I am relaying this information currently and will have a new objective once this one is complete. From who? Does that mean there are others out there at least? I will know more when we have completed this objective, it said. Where might we find your family? I wish I knew. I was traveling back from picking up a new refrigerator when it happened. It took me this long just to get here, but I thought it would be the best place to start looking. My wife was running the restaurant that day and the kids were at school. It's probably stupid to think she'd still be here. The beetle processes information. We should continue looking. If we do not find them, we will continue to the next objective. Okay, she said. She took a moment to look through the building. Let's check the school, she said. That's the town plan for most emergencies. Tornadoes, floods, stuff like that. The beetle flew beside the woman, using its spotlight to light the way. The school was only a few blocks away, so they arrived shortly. They did not see any signs of light. 
They entered the gymnasium, and it seemed that the woman had the right idea. There were sleeping bags laid out on the floor, coolers of food and water here and there between them. The woman searched through the belongings there, but did not see anything she recognized as her wife's or her children's. They walked through the hollow halls, crayon drawings flapping lazily in a draft. The woman walked to a classroom whose window was left open. She shut it. She lingered at a tiny desk, resting her fingers on it. My daughter, she said quietly. She got sat in front because she couldn't stop talking to her classmates. The beetle drifted away, exploring the other classrooms. They were equally empty of people, but full of their detritus, like physical echoes. Backpacks and pens and science projects. When the beetle returned, the woman and the dog were walking to the exit. We'll check the house next, she said to them, and they followed. She found a bike, leaned against the railing outside, and hopped on. This considerably sped up their trip, although the woman wobbled occasionally. It's been so long, she said to herself, every time her balance betrayed her. As they approached, the woman let out a shuddering sigh. From outside, a flickering flame could be seen inside. She jumped off of the bike and let it fall to the ground. Running up the walkway, she called out names. Attempting the door, she found that it was locked. She knocked hurriedly, desperately. The beetle surveyed the house and found that there was a gap under the back door that it could squeeze through. Mom? A voice called from another room. Shh! Another voice urged. The beetle could hear the woman's knocking and her voice saying their names over and over. Another woman cautiously stepped into the hallway, creeping towards the door. Please! The woman outside was yelling. The woman inside lowered herself and looked out the window. She sat down on the floor and covered her mouth, tears falling from her eyes. The knocking at the door became a pounding sound, and the woman inside covered her ears. She could not help but shriek when a bandaged fist crashed through the glass in the door. It reached in and unlocked the door from the inside as the woman skittered into the other room. The beetle followed and found the woman scooping up two small children. She ran upstairs as the door swung open. The dog entered first, sniffing at the ground. It immediately went up the stairs, the woman following it. The beetle did not know what to make of this, so it followed, skittering across the walls. From the doorframe, it watched as the woman placed herself between the dog and her children, brandishing a baseball bat. Stay back, she screamed. The dog bared its teeth at the children, and the woman with the bandaged hand stood in the doorway. The children cried out in confusion. The beetle watched as she unwound the bandages, revealing torn flesh, bones exposed. The flesh was unlike what the beetle knew of human anatomy, however. It did not bleed. The beetle received an updated objective. It flew to the woman's neck and sank the sharp points of its feet into the skin there. The woman reached to pluck it off. The beetle discharged electricity, causing her muscles to tense and jerk. The other woman took this opportunity and brought the baseball bat against her head, tears washing her cheeks. The dog leapt forward, sinking its teeth into the weeping woman's arm. The beetle disengaged and flew to the dog's snout. It turned on its spotlight, causing the dog to wince. The woman wrenched her arm free and the beetle delivered another surge of electricity. The dog fell to the ground, twitching. We should go, the beetle said, and the woman, holding her bleeding arm, stared at it in disbelief. She shakily reached out to touch the woman on the ground. I recommend we leave immediately. I'm unsure if they are rendered completely dysfunctional. The woman stood and ushered the children out of the room, promising to answer their questions as soon as possible. The beetle had used most of its energy supply, so it clung to her shoulder. She filled a backpack with food and bottled water. Where are we going? she asked. To where the objective points us. It should only be a few days if we are quick. They set out from the house, the horizon turning orange as the sun prepared to rise. The beetle pondered as they walked. It did not know much more than the woman, but it knew that it had been tricked the same way the humans were after it happened. It would need to be more careful from now on.